Welcome to Real Food. I hope everybody is feeling great and um, not suffering any consequences of um, a recent pandemic or lockdowns. Uh, we're finally in London, finally out of the second wave lockdown. But there are still lots of restrictions um, in terms of what you can do, um, the bars and restaurants that can be opened, etc. And this is um, all... Um, fairly difficult and problematic um, for for businesses and, and general households. Well, I also want to talk uh, a little about foods um, today which can be beneficial and which can help um, recover or even avoid um, viruses. Well, today um, I'm generally trying to stick with vegetarian food and I have to say that vegetarian uh, food has been very, very good for me. But this is... Um, this um, uh, can be different for different people, so um, so what works for one person may not necessarily be um, a, a perfect formula for somebody else. But today I've got this steak in front of me, and um, I've not had steak in a very, very long time. And I'm thinking to prepare a nice steak with a very nice sauce. Um, the reason why I'm doing this is because I've come across um, several reports which suggest that um, in order to get sufficient levels of iron, um, plant food isn't exactly very, very good for that because iron contained in plant food um, is relatively modest and it's very difficult to digest um, iron um, from plant foods. Um, on the other hand, from red meat, um, you can digest and, and uh, ingest um, iron much easier and more effectively. And the reason why iron, I think, is so important is that... Um, deficiencies in iron result in you feeling really cold and sort of shivering and you might even <laughs> confuse this with symptoms COVID symptoms or something like this and it's probably not a good thing to have during winter time so I'm thinking to top up my levels of iron a little with my steak today and because I don't want to feel too heavy um, um, with my steak I'm not going to have any grains or, or carbohydrates instead I'm going to have um, um, some broccoli and broccoli is another, um, you know, I, I would like to say miracle, miracle food, and it probably is a miracle food, because um, broccoli contains um, really good levels of folic acid, and again, this folic acid can be difficult to find in other foods, um, and also when you take it as a supplement, it's 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 questionable whether these supplements actually give you correct um, uh, nutrient, correct formula of, of actual folic acid, because this folic acid comes in a variety of different um, chemical com components, and not all of them are exactly perfect for you. Well, broccoli is one of the good things, one of the good sources, and it has also got many other very useful things um, in it. And of course, um, vegetables like these green vegetables like this can go really well with meat. Um, on the other hand, if you eat too many carbohydrates with meat, that can cause um, digestive problems. So I am um, um, trying to, to make this um, steak as healthy as possible and combine it with this healthy dose of um, broccoli. And with broccoli, um, I'm not going to heavily process it. I'm not going to heavily cook it. All I'm going to do, I'm going to gently steam my um, broccoli. I'm going to cut these florets and I'm going to steam them and I'm going to season them maybe with pepper and a little bit of salt. With steak, I'm going to take a, a little longer um, to cook it. I'm going to uh, grill it or, or fry it lightly uh, and I'm going to cheat a little. Instead of using making my own sauce, I will share this um, uh, Sainsbury's, it's one of the supermarkets in Britain, one of the larger supermarkets. They've got this amazing porcini and portobello mushroom sauce. I tried its ready-made sauce, and I tried this sauce before, and I can tell you this is a really amazing, um, very tasty mushroom sauce. And I think this mushroom sauce, again, because this is a vegetable, um, and mushrooms are very useful also because they contain good levels of vitamin D, again, which can be useful during winter. So that, this will create a nice, um, um, basically, a addition uh, to my steak and broccoli. But another thing, I've got this beautiful manuka honey here in front of me. Uh, I'm going to have this honey later with maybe a biscuit and, and uh, some tea. 
And um, I generally like honey very much, and I find all honeys really tasty. They're very delicious. They're very nutritious. They are quite sugary, so if you're trying to avoid sugar, be aware that honey contains uh, very large doses of sugar. Um, but um, at the same time, honey isn't just um, sugar. Um, honey contains a lot of very, especially manuka honey, and that's why I wanted to mention this in our today's conversation. Because manuka honey not only tastes amazing, um, when I eat manuka honey, I can actually eat several spoons at a time and not feel um, overwhelmed with sugar. Because I, I believe manuka honey doesn't contain as much sugar as some other honeys, but instead what it does contain, it contains um, a variety of um, active ingredients which actually do help fight um, bacterial um, uh, problems and, and potentially even viruses, actually, for that matter. So um, the way it works, um, and that's my understanding, so the components contained in manuka honey, they are contained in manuka honey in larger quantities. That's why it is so valuable. When you eat it, um, I can't remember the exact names of these chemicals, but you eat it, and during the, digest digest the digesting, um, these chemicals convert into active ingredients which release hydrogen peroxide. And the way um, it ha it works, hydrogen peroxide is a natural antibacterial and antiviral. It's a natural killer. And we all have these hydrogen peroxide in small quantities inside our bodies. But when we're deficient, our body cannot produce it in quantities sufficient for for whatever it needs, you know. So manuka honey can be useful in this. It, basically, you're, you're helping your body with this natural defense mechanism. So, but this is my understanding, and please do read, do do your own search, and you will, you, there's lots of articles about manuka honey at the moment. So you will find this is a very simplifi simplified way of describing what manuka honey does. And also I will mention that um, those active ingredients contained in manuka honey, they're also contained in other honeys, but not always in such large quantities. And the good thing about manuka is that this honey actually goes through a lab where they measure these components. So when you buy it, you can you can measure and you can buy higher, you know, for example, these numbers, 10, 20, 30, etc. Um, you can get higher levels of these components by buying these measurements in higher numbers. So um, um, we've been chatting for a while now and I'm feeling hungry now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to unpack my steak and I'm going to lightly lightly um, grill it, lightly fry it in, in, in a little bit of olive oil. Um, I was thinking maybe to use some um, bacon also with it, but I'm just going to keep it as is, because this is a mature steak. It has been matured, it was saying on the packet, for 21 days. It's a fairly large steak, I might just save some of it, um, but I'm going to cook all of it. And I'm thinking maybe I should add some garlic, because that will work really well with my um, with my broccoli and with my mushrooms. So mushrooms, broccoli, this steak and some garlic. I think that will work. Um, that will create a perfect wintry antibacterial anti-covid me meal. <laughs> you know, if, if I can describe it this way. Well that's the intention at the very least. And I hope you can also make something as delicious uh, yourself and and perhaps share you know do share some of your tips and what you think could work as a good anti covid anti flu anti bacterial meal um i would love to know and i would definitely try and cook it myself so my steak is now on heat and i'm just going to show you my um garlic and i i i think this is fresh garlic i bought it fresh and I'm going to chop it gently, and I'm going to add it to my um, frying pan, and um, this will serve as an additional flavor and strengthening um, medicine, basically, <laughs> against um, COVID and against uh, colds and flus. So here we are. So I've cut my garlics 
into um, fairly large pieces because um, another thing I discovered um, recently is that the active ingredient in garlic, if it's very thoroughly cooked, you reduce um, the effectiveness of those active ingredients in garlic or to almost zero. Maybe not zero, but it comes close to zero if it's completely cooked. So garlic, um, when, you, um, when you eat it, when you um, chew it, um, fresh garlic, it is only then, at that moment, those active ingredients become very effective. So ideally, you do need um, to eat fresh garlic if you want to use some of its medicinal properties. But in my case here, I don't want to eat too much fresh garlic because I want to use it as a flavor uh, for my steak. Um, but equally, I, I do want some some of the active ingredients to remain um, potent and to and effective. So these pieces they will cook gently, and there will be some left inside. I'm hoping, at least, at the very least, um, um, to to have some. So I'm going to also cook it thoroughly because um, the interesting thing is, you know, um, uh, many of the viruses we're talking about, like uh, Corona, COVID, etc., they are also um, widespread among animals. So when you don't cook your um, meat or um, other ingredients thoroughly, um, there's a small risk that you will actually ingest large enough quantity to also get sick. So I, you know, in, in this particular, at this time of the year, and with all these pandemics going around everywhere, I I probably want to limit these chances. And um, I'm going to cook my steak um, fairly well done and... Um, you know, I don't want it rare and I don't want it medium at this stage um, because I want um, to enjoy the benefits, um, the iron in the meat and other important um, nutrients such as um, amino acids without the viruses, preferably. <laughs> And at some point, I will also add some of my uh, mushroom, some of my mushroom sauce. I will add some of it directly into the frying pan and um, cook a little longer in that sauce. So all these flavors, such as garlic, mushrooms, and steak, they will um, infuse each other and they will make um, a very delicious winter antiviral <laughs> meal. So I'm now getting to a point when I can add my sauce, my mushroom sauce. Here we are. It's a fairly generous amount. I think that should be enough. And um, the bottle is quite large, so I'm going to keep half for another occasion. And um, now all these mushroom flavors are going to to add, and they're going to mix with garlic and with some. Um, fat from my beef and olive oil so I'm going to cook um, this for another five ten minutes and I think we'll be ready so I'll just have to um, steam my broccoli and um, I'm good so and this is my broccoli now so I've got some water and it's going on high heat and I will steam my broccoli, boil it a little and that will be um, my broccoli for my, my beef steak. So my, bro my broccoli is beginning to look softer and I will cook it for another um, five minutes or so and it will be ready. And so is my beef steak. So on this happy note, let me wish you bon appétit and um, that you will also come up with your, your own antiviral, anti-Covid um, dishes and hopefully you will share them um, and I can also try and cook some of your um, antiviral dishes. Okay, let me wish you bon appétit once again and I'll chat to you again in another video.